This news update is brought to you by... Rock the remote with hours of free karaoke on video on demand from Flo. So bring it like Bay. There's even wonderful kids sing-alongs too, available anytime. Simply press the VOD button on your Flo remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today afternoon news update for Friday, February 26. Thank you for joining us. I am Marie Claire Williams. Our top story, as a new government takes up office in Jamaica, local political analyst Peter Wickham says the results are an indication that residents desired a change after a long reign of the People's National Party. The Jamaica Labour Party, led by Prime Minister-elect Andrew Holness, won 33 seats to the PNP's 30 in yesterday's poll. Holness previously served one term as Prime Minister before being defeated by the PNP in the last election. But Wickham says the party is now in a strong position to tackle the country's current challenges. Now that we stand back and we look at the result, which was a very close one, uh, it suggests to me that the GLP has been given the type of government that it was handed two elections ago when the population of Jamaica uh, essentially rejected Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, uh, offered the job to uh, a, a new Jamaica Labour Party Prime Minister who subsequently resigned uh, in a controversial situation and then return the PMP to office. So the fact that the uh, cycle, one could argue, has now restarted with a JLP government being put in place with a similar uh, majority and a similar strength to what happened two elections ago essentially tells me that the public of Jamaica is now asking for an alternative, a new direction. They're ready to give the Jamaica Labour Party a chance. Uh, and I think that we should see a government that should hold itself together reasonably well for the next five years and uh, hopefully can break this cycle of one-term government and, and essentially win the next election. In other news, Chief Labour Officer Vincent Burnett is due to meet with the National Union of Public Workers and Management of Grantley Adams International Airport on Monday in the latest bid to settle the ongoing pay dispute. Burnett met with both sides separately at his Warren's office yesterday to discuss the matter. The union claims that workers are owed a 3.5% pay hike dating back to 2010. But the airport maintains the matter was taken off the table following a meeting with Prime Minister Frundell Stewart. The private sector is warning of possible layoffs and strained industrial relations if the proposed holiday with pay bill becomes law in its present form. Chairman of the Barbados Private Sector Association, Alex McDonald, says local companies have avoided major retrenchments for the past nine years amid the global financial crisis. But he believes under the new law, the cost of doing business will rise, thereby forcing job cuts. There are far too many areas of interpretive differences that should the bill be put in its current form, that given our knowledge of the industrial relations climate and the fears that we have, that will cause industrial relations concerns. You can't have a bill that two intelligent people can reasonably have two opposing views on the interpretation of that bill. Neither with, neither with malice, but both with very um, pertinent points of view. Can you imagine the chaos that that will cause on the industrial relations land, land, landscape, not to mention the court's system, court level of court and the level of just time and, and, and energy that is caught that will be used to try to settle these matters. Over the next three days, members of the public will have the chance to learn more about Barbados's agriculture industry. This as the annual agricultural exhibition AgroFest gets underway at Queen's Park. Chairman of the Livestock Committee, Jerry Thomas, told Barbados today the farmers have been looking forward to this year's event. You know, these farmers, they always have this rivalry and, um, among themselves every year. Um, this year, they're hoping, I, I, I hope that somebody else might win because the animals are looking very good this year and a lot of bigger animals than last year. And um, we hope to have a good show because these farmers, every year after the show, the fellas, they compete. It's a very good competition as far as the farmers are concerned. Residents of the Silver Hill community could soon be enjoying the services of a $2 million multipurpose center. Culture Minister Stephen Lashley told the launch last evening that the facility will be a boost to the community. This really is a major 
uh, project that we'll be undertaking. And the other aspect of this project entails some improvement to the road network around the area. And I have to thank the Urban Development Commission because they are going to be key to making this aspect of the, uh, of the project happen. We are going to improve the parking. We are also going to improve the road network around the area. And I tell you, the only problem we have is that we will probably have so many people who want to come and experience this atmosphere in Silverville. We we'll probably have to charge people coming in uh, at the end, block the road, you know, put a little, you know, and pick up some money and say, well, if you want to enjoy these pristine facilities, you know, we can charge a little toll to pass through. But I, I am excited because this really is going to be very transformative uh, for the lives of the people of Silver Hill. I believe that they deserve it. I believe that they uh, have, have certainly earned the right to have such an ultra-modern facility. There's regional and international news after this short break. Well, best, this big weekend, bring all your family and all your friends. Don't be foolish, you've got the plan, cause I'm bringing Dolly, Doocy and Dan. Don't be pussy, Lanny Moss, you've got to go and get your tickets at all the Moss offices. Agrofest 2016, have a ripple amount of entertainment, a humongous amount of agriculture projects. Agrofest for you, Agrofest for me. The mighty dung, 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 dung. God, these papers ain't selling at all, at all. Get your paper, get your paper. Only two twenty-five. Get your paper, get your paper, miss. No, take it, take it. I can pay for it. Barbados today, all the way. <laughs> Barbados today, news you can trust. In news from the region, Central Trinidad Steel Limited Centrin has sent dismissal letters to nearly 200 of its employees. The union representing the workers said the move is linked to a recent decision by the steel giant ArcelorMittal to shut down its plant, citing depressed steel prices internationally. In notice of the retrenchment, Centrin told the workers that their redundancy would take effect on February 26, 25th. Earlier this week, the Royal Dutch Shell Company in Port of Spain also announced job cuts and closed its Point Lisas plant south of the capital. The Steel Workers Union of Trinidad and Tobago said while Centrin could no longer secure raw material from ArcelorMittal, it should have engaged the union in finding an alternative to dismissing the workers. And on the international scene, a ceasefire will come into effect in Syria tonight, according to a plan agreed at a summit in Geneva earlier this month. However, under the deal, Russia and the United States-backed coalition forces will still be able to attack groups like the so-called Islamic State. We get the details in this report from the BBC. It's been five long years of civil war, leaving a quarter of a million people dead. Four million Syrians have fled the country. Much of Syria today lies in ruins. This ceasefire offers hope of an end, but no one thinks it will be easy. None of us are under any illusions. Uh, we're all aware of the many potential pitfalls, and there are plenty of reasons for skepticism. But history would judge us harshly if we did not do our part in at least trying to end this terrible conflict with diplomacy. It's not a total ceasefire. There are simply too many opposing factions for complete consensus, but it's a start. Russia, which along with Iran backs President Bashar al-Assad's regime, has promised to do whatever it takes to make sure it's implemented. 
The West backs the various opposition groups, which have also agreed. But on the ground, there are sceptical voices. If they really wanted a ceasefire, if they were really friends of the Syrian people and wanted to help, they would first take out the regime and all the fighting would stop. The deal excludes so-called Islamic State, so bombing from all sides against them will continue. And that's this afternoon's news. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. We invite you to subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also tune into Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good afternoon.